second magnetron. Up down. Okay, we baked it for several hours at uh, 500 degrees C. That was very, you know, very hot. And um, we get good emission. Uh, heat up the filament. We're getting 30, over 30 milliamps of emission with 67 volts. Put up more. <laughs> it goes way up there. We even get 10 milliamps with 24 volts on it. Okay, so we've got an absolutely excellent uh, cathode in there. Uh, I'm a little disappointed with how well it's centered in the middle. It's not centered very well. But it's it's done now. That's it. Alright, what we're going to do, we're going to flash the getters and seal it off. Soften up, collapse. so I don't burn my fingers and then we'll go and hook it up and see see if it'll oscillate. Alright, here we have the second magnetron. It's made basically the same as the first one. I just did a cleaner job on that seal, on that one pinch. Other than that, uh, it's made identical to the first one. And um, so if you want to see how it's made, watch that video. Okay, this is going to be just in operating. It, this one works. This one operates uh, just fine. I have no idea how much power it's going to put out. You know, I know it's not going to put out anything, you know, not enough to, you know, cook my supper or something like that, like a microwave oven, but um, you know, we ought to get a, a few milliwatts out of it. Okay, <clears throat> here we have the magnet, and it, the tube is arranged in it so that the magnetic field goes straight down the axis of the uh, two sectors. And uh, for a tune circuit, we've just got a hairpin loop here connected to the two anodes. So the combination of the capacitance of the uh, anodes themselves and the inductance of this circuit forms the tune circuit, the resonant circuit for the magnetron. Um, as it turns out, this one oscillates at around 331 megahertz. All right. Um, Okay, let's turn it on and see if we can get it to work. Spectrum analyzer. Okay, I'm going to turn on the filament and let it warm up. The filament on this takes about 3 volts to heat it up to proper temperature. It takes it maybe, um, oh, 10, 15 seconds here to go ahead and warm up. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring the uh, high voltage up and we'll see if we get us a signal. There it is. Okay, that's it. 300 volts. Okay, that's at 400. 
We're still running virtually no current. I, can, I can't see any current at all on the current meter. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut the... Um, I, I just got this thing sitting in the air. This is the pickup for the uh, spectrum analyzer. See, if I bring it over near the uh, tune circuit, it really starts picking up. Okay, I'm just going to let it sit here. We'll cut the... Uh, all right. Okay, that's 500 volts, and we're starting to get about 1 to 2 milliamps. Okay. Whew, boy, it's really going there. All right, that's at um, 600 volts, and about... Um, Looks like about three milliamps. <laughs> that thing is really oscillating strong now. And if I use this field strength meter like this one, you see we're picking it up for that. Whoo! Pegs out if I get it over near the tune circuit. Okay, I will bring the voltage up. Okay, we'll cut the sensitivity again. Wow, really attenuating down. Okay, we're up to about 8 milliamps at 750 volts. Woo! Wow. Okay, that's 10 milliamps at 800 volts. Look at that, that is just one solid. I'm going to open it, expand it a little bit. Now you can see the noise in the thing. This thing, <laughs> now the power supply itself is not that, uh, it's, it's not that uh, filter. Wow, that thing's putting out some current, I mean some power. Okay, I'm going to bring the power up some more. Okay, starting to have trouble. If I go up much more than um, 800 volts, it starts to um, uh, internally arc. So I'm not going to go above 800 volts. Okay, well, let's see if we can get some power itself out. See if we can demonstrate that it's putting out actual power. Okay, to do that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a light bulb. And I'm going to put a loop of wire on it like so. And we'll bring that near the uh, output and we'll see if we can get the light bulb to light while it's uh, oscillating. Okay, let me find a light bulb. Here. Let's see. Alright, this is good old 47, number 47. That ought to be just right. Alright, now that gives us our little loop here, and we can just hold that next to the uh, tune circuit, and we'll see if we can absorb power out of it to uh, light the bulb. I don't know if it'll do anything or not. I, it, it may be so low of power. Just because the spectrum analyzer shows a bunch of power doesn't mean it's, it, it's putting out a lot, because the um, spectrum analyzer is very sensitive. Alright, filament is lit. I will bring the power up to 10 milliamps. I'm going to put 10 milliamps on the... Uh, thing. All right, here's 400. That's 750. Okay, 800 volts. Spectrum analyzer's indicating. All right, let's see what happens here. Yeah. It's shifting the frequency. I'm not seeing even the slightest. There it goes. Look at that. 
<laughs> Let it cool off a minute. It <laughs> Woo. The uh that's really pumping some current through it. Okay, here we go again. I'm putting out maybe a hundred milliwatts or something. Okay, here we go. Okay, that's ten milliamps. There it goes. There, see we're getting power out of it. Look at that. 20 milliamps, 800 volts. Oh, there it arced. <laughs> when it just all of a sudden shut off like that, it arced internally. Oh, okay. Hey, that's it. That's a homemade magnetron. And puts out, I mean, when this one's fully lit, it's, it's 1.2 watts. So it looks like maybe one, maybe um, 200 milliwatts at the most. But uh, it was put, it's putting out. Hey, it's putting out. Isn't that something? All right. That's it. Homemade Magnetron. Success.